colleges. Look, people get too cold with the fans. They may be on the inside. <laughs> Come to the second one. Can y'all have a second one? Well, God, I tell you, I'm so glad that to be here today in the house of God, God is doing so nice good. We're going to continue our series that we started last week on soul wounds. And I've heard some really good reports uh, from individuals concerning the message on soul wounds. And we're going to take a look further. Pray. And uh, turn those lights off, please. We're going to pray and, and uh, go a bit. We may finish today, amen. And uh, then I want to pray for you, those that desire to uh, pray for you. You have no idea if people you sit next to what they've gone through. Amen. That's right. Come on, just ahead, please. Uh, the monitors, what they've gone through. And. Sometimes we can sit and look so nice, so pristine, oh, and uh, going through some serious stuff. But God has the answer for every last one of them. Every problem, every situation, God has the answer. In fact, He is the answer. And uh, but sometimes people get wounded and we cover it up. And Hide it, we do whatever we, you know. But that wound takes on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And you don't know why people do some of the things they do. And and I used to I used to wonder why people act the way they do, and sometimes why did I act the way that I did? And most of it stems from being wounded, rejected in some form. And it takes on a personality of its own. I can't go into all of what I did last week, but Please get the CD, or you can watch it on, on YouTube. Had some comments on that. People watching YouTube, and, and uh, the people get hurt. Yeah. Then they try to bury it, cover it up. But boy, sometimes you just can't cover it up. It comes out. Yeah. And people act in ways. I used to wonder, God, why do people act? Why? The people do some of the stuff they do. Right, right. And most of it is a facade. It is a, it is a cover up. And sometimes people end up over emphasizing something yeah. to to make up for whatever's lacking, maybe hurt. I want to show you something in the Word of God. We're gonna pray, and then I want us to go to Isaiah chapter fifty-three. I'm gonna read something to you that you may you may not know. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're going to release the children's church in it. Then, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we get to spend time in your word. Yes. Father, we are so privileged that we live in a country that we don't have to hide caves and hide houses to where we're afraid to open your word. Thank you, Lord, that we still can openly proclaim your word. Thank you that we can pray to you together. It's one, one body. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. I pray that you use this word, Lord, to bring healing, yes. bring revelation. Yes, Lord. Lord, to those that have been wondering why I feel the way that I do, why am I going through what I'm going through. Lord, if there's anyone here today, if anyone watching, social media that have been wounded in their soul. God, I pray that this message helps bring healing. Lord, we're hearing a lot of messages being preached today and most of them are very good. But Lord, you rarely hear about how to be healed in your soul. How to get past that emotional scars that life has left. I thank you, Lord, that you're using me and others like me that want to understand why people do the things they do. In Jesus' name, bless this message. Bless me, Lord, that I can give it the way you gave it to me. Not 
of me, God, but all of you. They may hear my voice, but let them hear your voice behind my voice. They may see me, but let them see you in me. Bless the hearers in the name of Jesus. Come against the spirit of depression. Try to come over some of God's people. Depression you cannot stand. Jesus is the healer. I release healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. Things will get better. Things will get better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Real quickly, turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 53. And we're going to thank you both. Isaiah 53. And I want to start at verse 1. Isaiah 53. I grabbed this Bible because I could see it. And it's a different translation. I don't know. We we'll just look on the screen, but you know, as the time goes on, you, your print gets bigger and bigger. The Bible gets bigger and bigger. But last night, I was reading some stuff last night. The print was so small, I could read every word of it. But today, <laughs> Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to read all the way down to verse 12. Is that okay? Alright. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the honor of the Lord revealed? Keep going, please. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground, he had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. Let's talk about Jesus. Okay? Stop, stop right there. All these pictures we see of Jesus, first of all, they're all false. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he wasn't a good-looking man, according to the word. Wasn't nothing that you would pick out of him that make him so spectacular. Jesus looked like an ordinary man walking this earth. He was full of the Spirit of God because he was God. But it, it tells us he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we have hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, surely he had borne our griefs. Listen, if he bore our griefs, why well, we still care? Oh, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Now, while I'm reading this, I want you to see all the things that God laid on him. He laid on him oppression. He laid on him affliction. He laid on him sorrow. He laid on him grief. He laid on him all of that. So that the reason he laid it on him, so that you don't have to carry it. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't allow myself to get depressed. I don't allow why? Because it seems like it would be a disservice to Jesus. All the things that he suffered for us. Why do we have to carry them if he carried them already? People don't understand. He carried them, so we don't have to. If you don't know you don't have to, you will carry them. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who, who shall declare his generation? For he was cast off, I'm cut off, of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Now as I saw this hundreds and hundreds of years before he happened, he prophesied the crucifixion of Christ. And he was, he was made, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. 
because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, I don't want you to miss this, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Not only did Jesus die for you, but his soul was also made an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his, day, his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see the travail, listen, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's verse. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul. Jesus died for your spirit, but he also died that your soul can be whole, your mind, your will, your emotion, everything that makes you up as far as your emotional uh, and your intellect. Jesus died so that can be healed. I mean, we shouldn't have to go around emotionally stirred when Jesus died for our healing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, he's a Bible spoiled with the strong because he had poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressions. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. Stop right there. We're talking about healing the wounded soul. And I'm here to tell you, we looked at some scriptures last week uh, as Hebrew 4, 12, talking about the word of God is quick and powerful, able to divide a son of soul and spirit with identified soul and spirit are not the same. You are a spirit. Yes. You're looking at people right now. You are a spirit. You have a soul, and that spirit and soul live in your body. Amen. I want you to know there's somebody looking outside your eyeballs right now. That's the real you. The real you is in you and your body. But this, this body, this is not the real you. This is not who you are. That's why, you know, I understand we want to look nice, we want to smell nice, we want to dress nice, but we're just dressing up a, a, a shell. Yeah, right, right, amen. amen. Right. The real you is on the inside. Amen. Now, I appreciate you want to look nice and smell nice. Praise God. <laughs> amen. We all thank you for that. Amen. But the real you it's on the inside of you. Amen. Looking at your eyeball. That's the real you. And that's what God came to say is the real you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we look at Hebrews 4. Now, if you didn't, didn't get a chance to watch it, you can watch the part one on YouTube or you can get the CD and, and check it out there. But I want to show you what happens when a person's soul gets wounded. Because I'm trying to figure out why people do some of the stuff they do. Some of the, the bizarre stuff people do. You ever met anybody that just does stuff and you just, you shake your head and you, you're trying to reason why people do what they do? Why people act the way they do? And, and, and why people are hard to, it's hard to get next to some people. And when I mean get next to, it's hard to befriend some people. And, and we, we should try to befriend everyone we can. But some people just make it difficult yeah. to even get along with them. Their personality is just rubbing. You ever made about their personality just rubs you the wrong way? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. Just rubs you the wrong way. Yeah. But you know you gotta love them. Yeah. Yeah. You know you're supposed to love them. Yeah. You know that you know God commands us to love them. Yeah. But it, it, some people's personality just it just makes it more difficult. Yeah. And some people don't even realize that they're hard to get along with. But, but, they, <laughs> but what they've gone through has shaped them. Yeah. Has shaped them to where they make it, they don't even realize that they're hard to get along with, they're hard to like. And we gotta love everybody. Yeah. I mean, love is, just comes, that's a part of a child of God. The Holy Ghost, we, we've been shed abroad in our hearts by the hope, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, so we love automatically. I don't have to work to love you. I really don't. I mean, I don't have to work to love you. I don't, because God's love has been
been shed abroad in my heart. I just love you. Amen. But liking you takes some work. Come on, yeah, you watch Come on now. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, 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 I guess I got a church full of religious people today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, loving you comes out of, oh yeah. Loving you comes out of that. Liking you is where the fruit of the Spirit comes in. Amen. See, I'm more impressed with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, which is self-control. All of it, I'm impressed with the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not impressed with the gifts of the Spirit. That's good. All right. All right. We heard the difference. Talk fast. I'm not impressed with the gifts of the Spirit. I'm just not. You know why? I'm not impressed with the gifts of the Spirit. I teach the gifts of the Spirit. I'm getting ready to teach a, a teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. I believe the gifts of the Spirit. I, I, the Lord used me to flow the gifts of the Spirit. But if I give you a gift, did you do anything to earn that? No. So you can't be proud because you're flowing the gifts. Come on. It's a gift. That's right. But if you if you operate in the fruit of the Spirit, yeah. that's more impressive. Why? Because the fruit has to grow. And you have to allow God to use your life to where the fruit can grow. Now that's impressive when you can walk in love, joy, peace, long suffering with difficult people. Y'all been making me difficult people? Yes. Now you sit next to them, don't look at them. But that's for the fruit of the Spirit. I'm impressed when I see people walk in the fruit of the Spirit. You talk in tongues, prophesy all that all day long, and I'm saying, well, God gave that to you. That's not impressive. But when you can walk in the fruit of the Spirit and manifest love and joy and peace and long suffering, man, I'm impressed with you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That impresses me. When people get on your nerve, but you still can put your arms around them and love them genuinely. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Y'all do me a favor. Clap like this. Come on, come on, clap. Right. Come on, clap. Let me see this. Yep, yeah, this is what I thought. Some of y'all hands were sore. This is what I thought. This is what I thought. <laughs> but that impresses me when you walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Now, last week we talked about a lot of some stuff. We talked about multiple personal. Uh, personality disorders, what the psychiatrists call uh, multiple personality disorders. What that really is is a soul, a soul that's been wounded and is drawn back. We talked about, now, now you have to get CD because I really can't do it justice here today. But we talked about uh, when people have, have suffered trauma in their lives. A lot of times soldiers, you know, have seen such trauma on the battlefield that they come back with what they call, what is that term? PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, that they've seen something that the body really could not handle, so the soul withdraws and a whole other persona comes forth. I've seen people, uh, a whole other personality. Now psychiatrists, now they, they try to give it the, 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 the medical term or the, the psychological term, multiple personality disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar, all these kind of things, and they are real. They are real. What they really are, are divided souls. Now, let me show you the, the scriptural basis for that, then I'm gonna keep going. Go to Hebrews. Hallelujah, remember last week I said we're gonna cook something up? All right, we're, gonna, we're cooking this up. Go to Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. I'm gonna give you a biblical basis for what I'm talking about. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me say this while you guys are turning there. We had an awesome time at, at uh, church prayer yesterday. Yes. Amen. Amen. Church prayer. Amen. You ought to try to come to church prayer if you can. Amen. Was that the, the, was the third Saturday? Third Saturday. Third, yes. third Saturday at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Yep. You try to come to church prayer. Unless you don't need to pray. Amen. Amen. I know some people are working, I understand that. <laughs> some people are working, I understand that. And some told me they couldn't make it. I understand that. But man, if you can come, especially if you're in leadership, you need to come to church prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray to get the same mind. Amen. Amen. Now, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper 
the any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divider, a sunder of soul and spirit. They're not the same. And of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, I read that to show this, that the Bible said the word of God can divide soul and spirit. And I told you last week that everything God can do, the devil always wants to have a counterfeit. Yes. If God can divide soul and spirit with the word of God, Satan wants to divide soul and spirit with trauma and traumatic events. There are people that have gone through trauma and traumatic events and their minds are not right right now. And you really can't blame them. Some of the stuff people have gone through. Told the story of the young lady that her father abused her over and over and over. And the only way she knew how to cope with it was to tell her mind to leave her body and go to a safe place. And she said, all that was left was my body. But they kept going over and over. She said, I couldn't figure out how to get back. And, and they diagnosed her as schizophrenia. And I told you the story last week how we, we helped her to bring her soul and spirit back together. And she's as normal as you and I are. But I said, what is normal? <laughs> because normal is relative. <laughs> what you might have called normal, I might have called normal. That's right. You know, so, but she is, she's functioning. Uh, without all of that medication, she's functioning and she's doing well. Why? Because her soul and spirit were brought back together and now she's whole. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I can show you how to do that. I believe that's why God gave me this message because I have seen countless number of people who, 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 whose minds were shattered by traumatic events and that was the enemy dividing soul and spirit. But we can bring it back together through the word of God. Amen. You have read some people that you know you love them but you know their minds are not right. It might be you. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just asking. So, the word of God can do that, and the enemy has a counterfeit for everything God has. We talked about the wounded soul, and we talked about emotional scars, and we talked about uh, extremely traumatic events. Has anybody ever seen something that was so horrible to you that it almost made you want to leave the scene? And I'm not talking about just leave the scene physically. Your mind just want to check out. Because it was so traumatic to you that I almost want to make your mind just check out and deny that it even ever happened. Mm -hmm. I've been doing things like that to where the mind begins to try to uh, make you think that it didn't even happen. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. But it's a self-protection mechanism. That's what it is. It is with self-protection. So when you see people stand offish, they don't want to get to know you. They don't want to get to fellowship with you. They don't want to talk with you. They don't want you to get to know them. It's not that they're trying to be mean or rude. That is self-protection. Because they have been through something from somewhere else and they don't want to repeat it because it was so horrible, they say, stay away. Hallelujah. You're mean about it. They don't say it physically. I mean, they don't say it verbally, but they got a sign up. Stay away. Yes. Their actions say, stay away. Yes. Their attitude says, stay away. So when you walk up to them, you can mm. <laughs> I'm staying away because they put off a persona don't mess with me praise the Lord God bless you, how you doing nice to see you, I'll hear the message but after the message, I ain't got time because I'm trying to protect myself so listen this is going to bring us up to the point of where I left off last week I wanted, this is kind of commercial I want to bring you we looked at Isaiah chapter 61 and where, where Isaiah was prophesying and where Jesus said the same thing in the New Testament. Isaiah 61 where he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. A good, he's, a, he's anointed me. So he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon, of God is on, upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. I know mean, we got to preach good stuff. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about just preaching houses and land and cars and all that. That's wonderful. I love the blessing. But good tidings to me is your mind is messed up and don't have to stay that way. Yes. That's good news to me. Amen. I ain't got no problem with preaching cars and houses and all that. That's part of the blessing. But even more part of the blessing, have your mind right so you can enjoy the houses and cars and land. Yes. I'd rather be
be, I'd rather be whole than have all the money in the world. Because I met some rich people who are miserable. Yes. Yes. I just wonder, how can you have $50 million and you are depressed and miserable? Oh, but then I found out money don't buy everything. Oh, yeah. It helps. Yeah. But it don't buy, it can't buy your joy, it can't buy your peace, it can't buy your harmony with your kids. Oh, so listen to this. Preach good tidings unto the meat. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now, in that verse, <coughs> keep going, brother. Let's keep reading. We're going to go to verse 3. Thank you. Keep going. I mean, no, stop right there. To proclaim acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Last verse, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in time to give unto them beauty for ashes. Yes. The oil of joy for mourning. Yes. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. So listen, brothers and sisters, we should not listen. And this is no condemnation of anybody. But all that God has done and given us, we should not have a down day in our lives. Will the pressure try to come? Yes, it'll try. Mm -hmm. But just remember what he's given you. Amen. He's given us the oil of joy. He's given us beautiful actions. He's given us the glory to pray for the spirit of heaven. You ever find yourself getting in heaven? Start praising God. Oh, yes. Amen. You ever find yourself getting in a dark spot? Start praising God. Amen. Stop what's praying in the spirit. I guarantee you, you'll live after a while. Come on. Why the devil fights it so much? Yes. He said, the spirit of heaven is that we might be called the trees of righteousness, yes. the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now we looked at we looked at six verses. Six types of persons in those three verses that we looked at last week. Amen. We looked at the poor. Yes. These people are poor in spirit. We looked at the brokenhearted. These are those that suffer tragedy and loss and are trapped in their sorrows. Yeah. Right. We've all gone through some terrible things in our life, but there are some people that go through some things that they're trapped in their sorrows. Jesus came to bring deliverance for that. Hallelujah. Talked about the captives. These are the people that are in bondage to drugs and alcohol and pornography and other addictions. We added another one there last week. <laughs> Captives. You ever meet anybody that they know it's killing them, but they can't break away? All right. You can tell when a person is in bondage and a captive when they know it's killing them, Come on. but they can't break away. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They know that relationship is toxic. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, park right there for a second. Come on. Oh, they know the relationship is toxic. Yeah, but let me tell you what a soul wound will do, a soul tie will do, yeah. a soul wound, a soul tie will make you gravitate back to the very thing that's killing you. Oh, oh, right. Man, beating you all in your face and in your head and kicking you down the stairs. And a month later, once you healed up, you right back with you. You got me? And don't tell me I'm making it up because I know him. People do that. Gravitate back to the very thing that's destroying their life. You know it's toxic. You know it's not what you should be doing. But you are wounded in your soul. You figure that's the best you can do. That's the devil lie. I told a woman one time, I said, what are you doing? She said, I'd rather have him than nobody. I said, girl, you know you need to be healed. So the captives are those that they cannot break free from on their own. That's why, that's why you see so many of these, oh God, I'm not saying they're not believers. I'm not going to say that at all. But this new Christian coming up, uh, I ain't seen that like it. <laughs> and the reason I see them like it because of the new pastors that are coming up. And the stuff that they're preaching, they're emotional, motivational speakers, but they're not preaching any kind of deliverance, Why? any kind of set free. Why? Because of oh, what? No, I'm not going to. I told the Lord I wasn't going to say nothing bad about nobody, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but you need pastors that can break stuff off of your life. That you can't break off on your own. That's right. oh, yes. And you're not going to get it just right here and smile and have a nice day. You just not going to get it. We talked about the prisoners. You think captives in prison were one and the same, but they're not. Captives are those that are bound to uh, addictive behavior. The prisoners are those that are bound by their own destructive.
destructive thoughts and thinking ideas. There are some people, man, they're caught up in their own crazy thinking that they can't break through. That's where I was. I was a prisoner to my own crazy way of thinking. And I was ensnared by deceptive thoughts. I believed wrong about everybody else. And when you believe wrong, you think wrong. Yeah. When you think wrong, you act wrong. Yeah. Some people are prisoners because of their own deceptive, destructive thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Then we talked about the mourners. The mourners in these verses are those that mourn because they've lost loved ones, but they mourn abnormally. We all should mourn when we lose people. If you don't mourn when you lose someone, I question your love for them. That's right, right. We mourn when we lose people. That's right. But we cannot mourn abnormally. Mm. And when you mourn abnormally, listen, and you can't tell people, just get over it. Come on, Pastor. You know, can't tell people, man, you ought to be over that by now. Well, it may take longer for me than you, but there is a time when you do get through it. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I said, the day my mother died, I thought it was the saddest day uh, in the history of the world. And I didn't think I was going to get over it. And you know what? I think about her every day, but I got through it. Yeah. And now my memory of my mother, I laugh and I smile when I think of her, but I think of her every single day, but I don't mourn no more. Yeah. Yeah. Number one reason I don't mourn because I know she would come back if she had the opportunity because she was in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But those that mourn abnormally, yeah. we have to breathe. But sometimes that grief can consume a person. Yes. Yes. Can't get on with life. That's right. I mean, there's a time that you got to get on with life. That's right. So, we talked about the poor, the broken hearted, the captain, the prisoners, the mourners, and then the last one we talked about was the warriors. I mean, that's the people that worry when things are going too good. Yeah. <laughs> the warriors. You ever anybody just worry about everything? Yeah. Oh, God. But you gotta try to bring some kind of light to this because there are some people who worry about everything. They stop enjoying life. They stop going places. Mm -hmm. They stop going to the mall because you know somebody shot up the mall. They stop going to the movies. They stop going out to eat. Listen, you can't let the worry consume your life. You gotta get on with your life. You know. But the worriers are those who worry about everything and everybody. They have no peace in their lives. The world has become a dangerous place to them with many real and imaginary fears. These are people, and I told you about a young lady that I met. She had left her house in five years. I ministered this message to her. Her mother took a CD home to her, and she was in church the next week. Why? Because this word will bring freedom to you when you understand that Jesus took all of that for you. Yeah. That word agoraphobia. How many know what agoraphobia is? Yes. It's when you're trapped in your own house and you won't leave your own house. Yeah. You won't leave your own surrounding. And you're trapped. Why? Because you are a warrior that if you left, something was going to happen to you. Jesus died for agoraphobia as well. Mm -hmm. So, this brings us up today. I talked kind of fast though. I said all of that last week, but I said a little bit more last week. But I wanted to bring up the date so you know where we were. Now, people that have been wounded in their soul generally exhibit one of these six traits. Some of y'all think of people right now, you mm -hmm. I saw you, you had your pen, you checking all of that, one. If you have three or more, y'all come and come see me, okay? But are some of you can identify yourself. I found myself in there, and when the special came for it, I found myself in there. But then when I found Isaiah chapter 53, Jesus died for every last one of those. He poured out his soul. He poured out his, his emotions. He poured out his will, not my will, but thy will. He poured his mind, his will and emotions were poured out for you and me so that our mind, will and emotions can be healed. Mm -hmm. So listen. Somewhere in one of those six is somebody you know. Okay? You may know them very intimately. Maybe you. 
There may be exceptions, brother and sister, but, but usually this is what's seen when a person has been wounded in their soul. I often wonder, God, why do people act that way? But then if you ever do this, if you ever just sit down and talk to people. See, we have lost the art of communication. Because now all we do is OMG, emoji. We don't know how to talk to you. When was the last time you really sat down and had a really cool conversation? Because you will find out so much about people. Once people get to know you, they begin to open up. And you say, my God, I had no idea you've been through that. I had no idea that you were abused as a child. I had no idea. But then you begin to say, now it makes sense. Now I understand. And, and, and when I talk to people, I always ask them, not always, but generally ask them about their childhood. Because a lot of things happen as children that we, we lock away, yeah. but when we grow up, they're yeah. still there. Yeah. And they come out in different ways. Amen. And people wonder why I can't ever keep nobody. It's because you haven't been healed. Because whenever that thing is touched, then you act, that other person comes out. Mm -hmm. And the person say, no, I didn't sign up for that other person. How many know what I'm talking about when I say that other person? I didn't sign up for that person. <laughs> now I had the opposite happen to me before I met Pastor Tanya. I was a, I was something. And, 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 and the young lady that I was with liked that something. She liked that craziness. I don't know what's wrong with someone with some type of Why they like thugs? I, I, I was a straight up. I was straight up. I, I walked Oak Cliff, down Dallas. I mean, I was the. I lived in Oak Cliff, and everybody knew Punch. I was the thug, and she loved that. Murray. Got me a thug. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I went to a revival meeting, and I'm standing back there trying to figure this preacher's angle out. You know, when he gonna ask for the money? Because I want to know when all of us gonna be taken up. Because I was thinking about robbing it. <laughs> No such a lie. That's right. And the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart. Praise and before I know it, big old crocodile tears. I'm running down the aisles crying. <laughs> I threw myself on the altar because this lady was singing this song called Give It to Jesus. Oh, Lord. And she started singing that song, Give It to Jesus. Man, it seemed like my body just lifted up and I found myself running down the altar. And, and, and I, I came home and I told this person that I got saved. And it's, I decided for this Christian life. Because I stopped all the crazy, I stopped all the banging, gang banging, I stopped all the, the I stopped it all. And I started going to church, and this person told me, I didn't sign up for this. And I left. And I was wounded. Because I said, now, when I was living crazy, I had somebody, but now that I'm living for you, I'm all by myself. What's up with that? And the Lord told me, he said, if you just serve it, he said, he said, uh, I'll, I'll present somebody to you that's going to love you who you are, the real you. Amen. But generally, it's the other way around. Yeah. The, the, the other person comes out, and the person says, well, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. But let me tell you something. One of these personality traits will manifest when people have been wounded in their soul. Tell you what happened. Now, if you're taking notes, that's fine, but I want you to remember what Pastor's saying here. Mm -hmm. Some people that have been wounded in their soul, y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Become angry and bitter. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Unable to trust anybody completely yes. because of their experience with people. Yes. Some become angry and bitter. They'll trust you up to this point. Yeah. <laughs> But they won't go all the way because they say, no, I went all the way one time and I got my heart tore out. So they'll trust you in this point. And you always feel that there's more that they could give. Right. Right. And you, you, trust me, you, when you're in this kind of relationship, you always feel, I'm giving more than the other person. Yes. Right. I'm being more understanding than the other person. And after a while, that'll wear on a person. Yes. But they become angry and bitter and unable to trust anybody completely. 
They've been wounded in their soul, they need to be healed. Others, now, others keep their pain locked away inside. But sooner or later, brothers and sisters, sooner or later, many times much later, it will surface. Sometimes with horrific consequences. But sooner or later, it will surface. When people have been wounded in their soul and they keep it locked away and have not allowed God to heal that, these are the people that shoot up shopping malls. Yes. These are the people that go shoot up schools uh -huh. because they have been wounded in their soul. Now, I'm not saying everybody going to do that because some people have been wounded will never go to the extreme, but these are some people that have never allowed God to help them. Yes. They've been labeled as bipolar, schizophrenia, and all of that. Let me tell you, I had every label put on me you can put on a person, but I know the power of God can set you free. I know the power of God can set you free, but when you lock that pain on the inside, this is what, now some people will never go to that extreme. I'm going to be extreme. But some people lock their pain on the inside, and they won't let anybody in. I'm going to show you some of the characteristics of somebody who's like that. Some, because of deep soul wounds, want to hurt others mm -hmm. or even hurt themselves. Right. Yeah, man. You can tell when a person has been wounded in their soul. And, and I met a young lady that was just cutting herself. I said, what are you doing? She said, I hate myself. And she was mutilating herself. Why? Because she had been wounded and didn't think she was pretty enough. Wounded in her soul. And they want to hurt others or hurt themselves. You know anybody just want to hurt people? Just hurt people for no reason. Person ain't done anything to them. They just want to hurt people. That's a wounded person. That's a person that wounded their soul. Why don't you just go knock somebody out? Just because you got up that morning. Oh, I used to hang around people like that. Let's go knock somebody out. <laughs> been wounded in their soul. Y'all know somebody like that. You probably might go back to somebody like this today. <laughs> What causes a person to be wounded so in their soul that they begin to exhibit one of these six traits? What causes it? Let me tell you one of the primary reasons that causes soul wounds is rejection. Rejection is the primary way soul wounds are formed. And I want to show you what some kinds of rejection. And listen, if you identify yourself, this is no condemnation on you. This is God speaking to you that he wants to heal you. Yeah. Okay? Rejection can come, and, and, and the reason I, I'm putting these here because of the people that I've spoken to in the past. <laughs> Why people feel rejected. Sometimes rejection can come from being conceived out of wedlock. Yes. People yes. feel rejected. Yeah, yeah. Right. Baby, no. Being unwanted by the parents. Yeah. Lack of attention and affection for mom and dad mm -hmm. Amen. can also cause child to suffer rejection. I talked to a young lady, talked to a young man. He said, I never met my daddy. And, 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 and man, this dude was living a life of just crazy. And he said, man, I, I don't know my daddy and I'm just mad. Mm. I'm just, I feel rejected. Why he didn't want me and why she didn't want me and this and this. This can affect a child. You don't even know a child can tell when they're not wanted. Mm -hmm. A child can tell when they're not wanted. Yes. And it can form rejection. Or a child can perceive that they're not wanted because of something the parent does. And that may not be the case at all. But guess what? Perception is reality. Mm -hmm. If they perceive it, that's their reality. Yes. And it may not be that case at all, but if that's what they perceive, they grow up all these years feeling that they were not wanted. Yeah. Amen. Rejected. Rejection. Here's another way rejection can come. This is what man. How many of kids can be cruel? Yeah. Kids can be. Absolutely. That's why we gotta train our children to be loving and kind the best we can. Because them little jokers can be cruel. <laughs> rejection sometimes results from teasing and being made fun of in childhood yeah. from siblings or the people you go to school with. It can cause rejection. Possibly because of a physical or mental disability over which they have no control over or their fault. How I many kids make fun of you? Amen. Especially if you have a mental challenge or you have a physical challenge. Now, I always had a soft spot in my heart for people like that. Even when I was a thug, 
I would jump on people for messing with people that had issues. Yeah, right. I would. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a soft spot in my heart. I saw a little boy one time, I was probably about 14, and, and I saw him on crutches. I cried all day long. They didn't even know I was crying. Why well, I was crying. But it touched my heart. And I always had a spot in my heart. And I know it shouldn't be saying I jumped on people for messing with people, but I did. <laughs> it's probably not the Christian thing to say, but I did. Because if I felt you were taking advantage of someone who had a mental issue, a physical challenge, that something rose up in me, man, and we were going to deal with that. But that child that suffered, you know, ridicule and stuff, that kid can be, grow up having all kinds of rejection issues because kids can be cruel and make fun of you, and a lot of kids hold on to that, and you just can't say let it go. Right, right. A lot of kids hold on to that, and it goes into their adulthood. Yes. And they've been made fun of all their life. So this is why, now listen, not everybody's like this, but this is why some people, if you're staring too long, yeah. They get a problem because they feel like you're making fun of them. Because yeah. they made fun of in childhood. Yeah. So you gotta watch when you stare too long. That's it. When I go to the hood, I don't stare at nobody. <laughs> I look straight ahead. <laughs> but if you're staring too long, what you looking at? What you you know, because they have been they felt a rejection because of their childhood, kids made fun of them. So when you look at them, check it out. You can tell who they made fun of in their childhood because when you're looking at them too long, or they act in a way that when they try to show you they're just as good as anybody else. Right, right, yeah. You tell a person they reject them because they always try to show you always. how good they are. Always. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Mm. When a person experiences rejection, he or she begins to lose self-worth. Their image of him, himself or herself is distorted, and acceptance from others become very important to them. When a person has been rejected, man being accepted becomes so important. A person who is always striving for approval or validation from other people is probably suffering with rejection. I want you to like me. I'd like you to like me. But if you don't like me, I don't care. Yes, I am. Oh, God. Oh, if I'm nice to you, and I'm kind to you, and you should like me, and you don't, trust me, when I do go to sleep, I'm going to sleep just as good. Because I know I ain't done anything to you. That's right. But a person suffering from rejection will go out of their way and have a, a horrible day if somebody don't like them. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't like themselves. Yeah. Amen. You don't like me? I like you too, and I try to live a life to where people say, well, that's okay. He's cool. He's cool. You know, he's good to know. He's good to like. But if you don't, it's all right. What is it? You hear me? Check this out. Let's write this up. There are two primary types of rejection that we can identify. There are two types of rejection. The first type of rejection is direct rejection. This type of rejection is overt, in your face, and intentional. I don't like you. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to be seen with you. I don't care about you. That is direct rejection, and it results from words or actions that move the person's soul. Some examples of direction, uh, direct rejection are these. Over rejection because of being unwanted as a child. I never wanted you. Your mama wanted you, but I never did. You know, your daddy wanted you, but I never did. You tell that to a child, that is direct rejection. Another one, long absences by the parent from the child. That child don't understand you have to work 16 hours. They don't know. All they know is you're not there. I talked to a man, this man is 65 years old, still dealing with this stuff. His mama had to work all the time. He said, well, all I know is she wasn't there. This man is 65 years old, still dealing with this stuff. I said, you need to be healed, brother. Because long absence by a parent from a child, kids don't understand you got to work to put food on the table. All they know is you are not there. And it causes a rejection. Here's one that's just so obvious. Physical, sexual, a verbal abuse will cause direct rejection. Yeah. People, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even fathom how a person could hit a child. I love babies so much, I love children so much, I can't even fathom how a person can abuse a child. I, I know it happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. put stuff on Facebook, I can't even watch it. 
because I, I, I can't watch it. Because I can't even, I can't even wrap my mind around how a person could harm a child, a person could physically or sexually abuse a child when that per person baby can't defend themselves. I can't even imagine. And it makes me so angry. See, God's can't work me on that because I'm like, if I ever saw that, I'm going to catch a case already. Now, here's one that you don't think about. That's rejection. But adultery. That is direct rejection. Because if you go out and you, 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 you step out on your mate, that is rejecting them. And that's all they're going to feel. That you're rejecting me. You get this? Here's another one. Divorce. Now, you say, wait a minute. How can divorce get some rejection? Sad is sometimes when couples get divorced, the children are forgotten by one of the parents. And that child grows up with a feeling of direction, of rejection because they say, Mom and Daddy split, but man, Daddy forgot all about me. Mom and Daddy split, Mama forgot all about me. I don't care if y'all couldn't work it out, them still your kids. And it will bring the, the it will bring rejection, direct rejection. Here's another one that you may have thought about. Constant criticism. Constant criticism is a sign of rejection. You are no good. You are so stupid. You can't do anything right. You'll never make it in life. You're an idiot. And the list goes on and on and on. You keep telling the person this. And you don't know what you're making. And if a child hears this over and over again, you don't know what you're making. You're making something that you don't want to see. Constant criticism. You'll never do it. You'll never make it. You're stupid. You're an idiot. That is constant criticism. Now, those are direct rejection. Let me give you indirect. Indirect rejection. This type of rejection is a result of unintentional actions or words that wound the person. I mean, no, just because it was unintentional, that don't mean it don't hurt. I didn't mean it that way, but it still hurt. I didn't mean it to come out that way, but you still said it, though. And they may not have meant it, but it still hurt. I know stuff you didn't mean to do. If you accidentally shot me in my leg, that's what I'm still shocked. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'm still shocked. And it still hurt. Don't ask me how I know it. Indirect rejection, though not as obvious or dramatic as direct rejection. Indirect rejection still causes wounds. Nonetheless, a person who has suffered from indirect rejection will have problems relating to others. You can look at a person, and they're going to say that after this message, don't be sitting and looking at people, I wonder what they got. <laughs> but, however, you can tell when a person has suffered indirect rejection because they have problems relating to others because of inner hurts and scars. He or she carries with them. This type of behavior that often indicates the influence of indirect rejection are these. When a person is depressed and for no apparent reason, that's a sign, could be a sign of indirect rejection. Hostility. Let me show that. I see y'all right. Depression. Hostility. You ever anybody just hostile? Yeah. Why are you so hostile? Amen. Why are you so, I mean, just your demeanor. Yeah. Why are you, you know, that person doesn't feel like they're as good as everybody else and they're angry about it. Hostility. Here's another one. Anxiety. God didn't call us to live in anxiety. But a person that exhibits anxiety could be suffering from indirect rejection. I wonder if I'm good enough. I wonder if they're going to like me. I wonder if they're going to like what I say. I wonder if they're going to like how I say it. I wonder if they're going to like this. I wonder if they're going to like that. That's indirect rejection. Somebody suffered somewhere. Rebellious attitudes. Just rebellious. Don't want to do right for whatever reason. Just rebellious attitudes. And I'm not talking about just walking in rebellion. Just the attitude of rebellion. Remember right. <laughs> we were flying on the plane one time. Y'all yeah, forget that some kids ain't mine. I forget. <laughs> I was 
reaching for a belt. My dude running all over the plane, screaming, hollering, that crazy carrying on. And mama finally got a hold of him because, you know, I was looking. <laughs>
You got to proclaim the authority given to you by Jesus. You have authority. Write down Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I'm just giving you for the sake of time. Read these. Mark 16, 17 to 18. Romans 16 and 20. These will help you begin to take control of your soul. <coughs> now, I'm getting ready to close. But I want to show you something. Now, I've been talking in general terms, okay? But now I want to get real personal, okay? I want to get real personal. I've been in general because you just scatter the seed where they fall and fall, right? But now I'm going to get real personal with you. If you exhibit any one of these things that I'm about to say next, you need to be healed. Okay? I don't care how saved you are. I don't care if you're preaching. I don't care if you're singing. I don't care if you're ushering. I don't care if you, whatever you're doing. People, born again believers, walking around with souls. Okay? If you experience any of these, I want you to know there's help for you and there's healing for you. And listen, I still go through this myself. I still go through this. Because as life goes on, you always have an opportunity to get more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something may happen next week. Yeah. Something may happen next month. Yeah. Something may happen next year. It's always good to be on and quick yeah. because life happens to us all. Yeah. Amen. 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 Here's, here's what I want to show you. Now, this, this is not a blanket statement to everybody, but I'm talking about if you feel this way, there's healing for you. If you were ever Orphaned or abandoned, you may need to be healed. So, Pastor, do we have anybody orphaned or abandoned? You have no idea who you sit next to sometimes. And the reason they act the way they do. I thank God He has called me now to look at people with more understanding and try to understand why people act the way they do. If you were physically or sexually abused, if it hadn't already been, you need to be healed. Okay? Here's one that I, I, I encounter quite often. If you often wish you had never been born, you need to be healed. I'm that person. I, I wish I'd never been born. I wish I'd never even. Why did they even bother to bring me into this world? That's a person dealing with soul wounds that need to be healed. Because if you knew who you were in Christ, you would never make that statement. You were born for purpose. Yes. You would never say that. Amen. Listen to this. If you have a destructive habit that is resistant to change, especially after you have tried prayer and fasting, if you have a destructive habit that is resistant to change, especially after you have tried prayer and fasting, you need to be healed from a soul. You know it's killing you, but you just can't break through. There's help for you, praise God. Y'all don't hear no combination in this message, right? There's help for you. This is this. If you experience persistent or uncontrollable fear, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But if you experience persistent or uncontrollable fear, you need to be healed. Because we are not to be afraid anything. God's not giving us that spirit of fear. And when I say afraid of anything, y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Big old tiger coming in. I'm going to run. I'm not going to try to wrestle the tiger. Because I do have some kind of sense. But I'm talking about just fear. But no, just fear. Fear the economy. Fear this. Fear this. Fear this. I, I met a lady uh, last week. She was a fit. We can't even go to war. How the terrorists can't go? They don't come. I said, Mom, woman, ma'am. I said, you just told me you'll believe. Calm yourself. Yeah. We're getting ready to go to World War III. Russia's getting ready to take over. Listen, I said, calm yourself. 
I said, because if we go to World War 15, God's going to take care of you. Yeah. 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 I said, if, if somebody, if, 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 if something do happen, and we lose our life, Paul said to be absent from the body, to be and Christ was the Lord. And he said, whether I live or die. And, and, and Paul was even telling him, he said, if y'all do kill me, you only speed up what I want in here. I want to speak the Lord. So if you have this kind of attitude, you will not walk in fear. No matter what happens, we're going to be with God. If I live, I'm going to tell everybody about God. If I die, I'm going to see God. What do we have to be afraid of? The believer should be the most confident person that ever walked this earth. Why? Because no matter what happens, I'm going to see God. Now, I'm planning on being here a long time. But if I meet him tomorrow, y'all better feel it. Check this out. If you experience terror and panic for no known reason, you need to be healed. So, mm -hmm. panic and terror for no known reasons. There may be a soul you need to be healed from. Just a few more. Y'all got that? Yeah. Count all those effects. If you struggle with depression, loneliness, Anxiety or suicidal thoughts. You need to be healed. I'll say that again. If you struggle with depression, loneliness, anxiety, or suicidal thoughts, you need to be healed. I'm not talking about occasional being lonely. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the kind of loneliness that sinks you down to the very pit to where you're just lonely. First, you need to realize you're never alone if you got Jesus Christ. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, I know that's easy for me to say, I go home to my wife, I go home to my kids, and stuff like that. But some people go home to absolutely nothing. That's right. yeah. But you still Amen. have the Spirit of God with you. Say that. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you right where you are. So listen, you're never really alone. Amen. Listen to this. If you are abnormally shy, Tipped or ashamed. If you are abnormally shy, timid, or ashamed, you may be dealing with some souls. Because how many know we're not ashamed now that we're in Christ? There's no condemnation of them that are in Christ. We don't have anything to be ashamed about. Amen. They're always trying to bring up our past. I bring up his future. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. They bring up my past. I bring up his future. There you go. You remember what you did? I remember where you going? <laughs> Shuts him up real quick. Remember what you did? I said, remember where you're going? <laughs> you're going to the pit, brother. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Listen, two more. If you persistently feel guilty or condemned, you may need to be healed of soul. There is no condemnation in Christ. I ain't guilty. I'm not guilty. Why? Because he took it on the cross. Amen? Amen. The last one. This was the biggest one of all. This is where I was. I didn't even realize it. If you are resentful toward God, mm -hmm. you need to be healed. You don't have no idea of people walking around mad at God. Right. Mad at God what happened, mad at God because he, he let it happen, mad at God because of what you've gone through. I, I went through that phase, man. I was so mad at God one time, I lost everything I had. I lost everything yeah. and everybody in my family. I lost it. I was homeless on the street. And I thank God for his mercy because the stuff that I said and did. I mean, I call God. I, I, I'm not a good cousin. Never was a good cousin. Still, I don't cuss him out for real. But even when I was in the world, I couldn't cuss him good. But after I lost everything, I cussed God for everything, every cuss word I can ever remember, every gesture I could ever make, I did it. And I was standing out in the rain, homeless, pouring down the rain. They didn't know where to go. Mad. Hey, cussing, gesturing, and I did all that and started thundering. <laughs> I took cover, but I, I was just mad at God. <laughs> Do I have any honesty to have? Have you ever been mad at God? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. I see a few hands. I see some of y'all. Some of y'all say, I ain't going to raise my hand. But that's all right. I was mad at God. 
though. I was resentful toward God. And if you say anything about me, about God or Jesus, you probably got knocked out. I didn't want to hear it. I said God was responsible for everything that happened. So I realized it wasn't that he was responsible. He was protecting me. I said, how are you protecting me? After God has shown some things to me, I hit my knees and said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How he's kept me all the time but the reckless way I was living. And you know when you get mad at God, you just live reckless. Because you don't care about it. That's right. I live reckless. I should have died on the other time. But God kept me. But because I, I was just mad, I didn't care. Come on, let's go. Let's ride. I didn't care. Right. You know, I didn't care. I said, well, I'm going to hell anyway. If that's you know, if hell's real, I'm going anyway. So that's why I'm going to get it over. I did all kind of stuff. I knew I should have got killed. Right. God kept me. Yeah, yeah. And then he forgave me. Yeah. For being resentful toward him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God, God wish you. Now, if you saw yourself in any one of those, I want to read something to you in a prayer release. Then I want to pray over you. I know it's, it's a little late, but this is important. If you need to leave, I certainly understand. But if you sense any of this, the last two weeks that I've been talking about, if you sense any of this, I will show you how simple it is to have a man of God pray over you and pray the prayer of release over you. Now listen, I have to say this. If you are holding something against someone that has done something to you that they are now dead, you still can release them. Because I know people that have been abused by their parent, by their father. He passed on. They were holding it and said, how can I let it go now? He's gone. I said, listen, it's not for him. It's for you. And you can release him and let this thing go and be healed from this day on. They did it and now they're healed in their soul. But they were holding on to that and they were angry because he was dead now. And now they, they, they figured they couldn't make him pay. I said, I said, man, if he didn't get it right with Jesus, he paid. Yes, yes. I said, don't you worry about making him pay. You need to be healed. That's right. So if there's anyone here today, once I want to pray this prayer of release, I want to pray for you, okay? Is that, is that okay? Yes. yes. All right. This is this. This is a prayer, and it's called the prayer of release. It says, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you do me a favor? Will you bow your heads when I say this? And I want you to just listen to the words. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus is the only way to God. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I believe that Jesus poured out his soul so that my soul, my wounded soul, can be healed in his name. I now give up all and any rebellion and independence, any pride and self-centeredness, my harboring of rejection and feeling inferior, any bitterness, any unforgiveness, I give up all my rights to hold on to any hurts and resentment and submit myself to God. I confess any sin known and unknown before you and I ask you for forgiveness. Release me now from the power of the enemy of my soul because Jesus paid the price for me to be made free. I forgive myself for all the wrong of the past. And I accept and I see myself as you see me, Father, healed and free. By decision of my will, I now forgive all who have wronged me and harmed me. 
in my past, just as I want you to forgive me, I forgive them. Now, brothers and sisters, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think of the name of the person or persons that have wronged you, may have hurt you, may have abused you, may have rejected you directly or indirectly, may have said words to you that have wounded you deeply, may have done something to you that have wounded you deeply, but you want to be healed today. I want you now, where you are, to now forgive that person or persons that's coming to your mind right now. The Holy Spirit is bringing it back to your remembrance. Whether it's been recently or whether it's in your childhood, I want you to release them, forgive them. Any person dead or alive, forgive them now so that you can be healed and lead them to God. The Lord Jesus said, he will repay. Release them now. I need you to release them, whether it's mother, father, siblings, uncles, whatever, aunts, whoever has wronged you, whoever rejected you. They didn't want you. But God says, I kept you. I want you. I hear the Lord say, I want you. I want you in my life, in my family. Forgive them now. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Now I want to pray a prayer of release over you. Will you stand to your feet, please? I want to pray a prayer of release over you. If you have said that and you meant it, it only take, it just only gonna take a few minutes, but we've done most of the work. I need you to come stand right here. Let me pray a prayer of release over you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray a prayer of release over you. Glory to God. And it's gonna be done by pronouncement. This is what I love about being a man of God. We can pronounce the blessing, we can pronounce releasing over you. God has given us that authority and that right to do so. What I'm going to do, as you lift your hands, I'm going to pray this pronouncement, this release over you. In the name of Jesus, come on, lift your hands. Glory to God. And I want you, as I pray this over you, would you please repeat it after me? What I say, I want you to say. And then we're going to see what God did. Amen. Glory to God. I want to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pull down every stronghold in my life and renounce any power of Satan that will try to claim any error in my soul's life. By faith, I now receive Stay right where you are. Glory to God. We're going to seal it in the name of Jesus. 